Good day everyone, welcome back. So for today's finished kit review, we'd be taking a look at Tamiya's 135th M5A1 Stewart. Now this kit, this model, is pretty cute actually. Um, it's rather small and a little note on the size, it does not actually represent the entire length of an actual M5A1. If I'm not mistaken, I did see a diagram that compared the hull of the kit to the actual M5A1 and it's missing um, some length around the rear. But for the most part, it would look like an M5A1. It's coming closer on the details. As you can see, here's the running gear and the suspension. It's not really obstructed by much of this side skirt here. And you can see well in, inside, you can see the return rollers right here. Also the road wheels, the drive sprocket, and the big idler right here. And also this particular gadget right here would be a hedgerow cutter. Which was highly used during the maneuvers in and around France. As there were a lot of um, greenery in between the countryside of France and they had to cut through that so to avoid the tank getting stuck or entangled in such greenery they would have these on and also some Shermans use them as well so around the side you could see just about the same and then the rear you can see all the pioneer tools right here you have the head for the pick spade then an axe right here, hammer. And going around this part, you can see, um, if I'm not mistaken, axes, hatches for the engine right here. So the tracks, you can see right there. Mostly one piece, um, rubber blocks, and then the connecting links. So going around the top, let's take this off for now. You can see that um, this kit of Tomiya is supposedly for motorization as well. But I just um, went ahead and painted and built this without um, really covering this up anyway. So you can see here the engine deck details, um, parts, bolts, grills, also the fuel cap covers. Some few oil buildup, though I might have to go back around this part again some dirt accumulation right there then also the hatches for the um, driver and also the bow gunner then you can see here that Tamiya did go ahead and add some additional stowage or additional details for your M5 Stewart these are two sandbags right here and then also an additional road wheel a friend of mine did suggest for me to get more sandbags and fill this up as there are photos of stewards with about the entire front covered up in sad sandbags. And ideally this was supposed to add a bit more protection against small arms fire and also um, the Panzerfausts. So here being the turret put that back now ideally there's supposed to be a 30 cal mounted here however i did take the 30 cal for this kit and placed it on the m4 composite hull sherman the one um, named battle and basic for my battle of manila build anyhow about here you can see extra track links that are um on the side of the turret for a bit more added protection as well as the rear right here now the particular design here is quite interesting as you can see there's some um, substantial space in between this panel right here and the actual turret so going around you can see here a fairly simple spotlight detail here and the interior is painted with chrome silver. So you have the main gun right here and also the 
Kawa actually. The antenna was made using stretched sprue. So there wasn't a lot of um yeah there wasn't a lot of problems when doing this kit. One thing I would like to point out, however, would be the attachment of these um, side skirts right here. So around the front, you can see that the attachment points are good. Around the sides, good, good, good. Until, actually for both, until they reach this part right here. As you can see. I'm not sure if this is a um, slight fitting issue. But there are some small gaps in between and also here so in a way it doesn't exactly line up but with a little correct alignment it should um, fit snugly so aside from that I didn't really do much repairing just some minor gap filling especially for the um, hull piece attachments around this end right here but other than that most of it is fine the turret assembly as well came together quite nicely pretty simple assembly especially with the hatches right here they're um, separate pieces also this part right here but overall um, most of the gaps can be filled in or aren't really noticeable So yeah, for the detailing, I did use Vallejo Model Air US Olive Drab, then AK Interactive Weathering Pencils for the streaking, as well as some oil paint, especially for the oil spills right here. And then heavy pigment use around this area and also here. So yeah, that's mostly it for this kit. Hope you guys enjoyed. And for the next episode, we'd be taking a look at ICM's 135th Lek Tractor. And that's it. Hope you guys find this kit interesting. If you did, leave a thumbs up. But if you didn't, leave a thumbs down. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this kit. Is it um, something you're keen on getting? Is it something novel? Or any feedback in general. And as always, keep safe, keep modeling. And until next time... Goodbye.